right, let's call this regular monthly meeting to order of the Scarborough Sanitary District. It is Thursday, December 16, 630. And we'll start with the roll call. We'll start with Ruth. I am present. Excellent. Paul. <laughs> present. Then Here. Joe. Here. And Chairman Nick Rico. All right. We have two sets of minutes that we need to approve. I'll entertain a motion first for the budget workshop. Motion to approve. Thank you, Ben. Second. Thank you, Paul. Any additions, subtractions, omissions? Barring none, all in favor? None opposed. Thank you. All right, I'll entertain another one for the regular monthly minutes from November. So moved. Thank you, Paul. Second. Thank you, Ben. Any additions, corrections? Barring none, all in favor? None opposed. Wonderful. Superintendent's report, your update. Okay, a copy of the uh, monthly report of operations for the month of November is included in your packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.58 million gallons per day. Our effluent quality was, again, well within our permitted limits. We averaged 96% BOD removal and 99% TSS removal with um, concentrations of 9 milligrams per liter and 3 milligrams per liter, respectfully. Copy of the pump station flows for the month of November is also included in your packet. The cause of the errant high flows at pump station 13 on the 15th was due to a malfunctioning hydro range, which was replaced on the 15th. And the cause of the erratic flow data at pump station 26 was due to construction activities. Uh, Knowles Industrial Solution has complete, completed painting the floors in the blower, the floor in the blower building, the ground floor, and the pump station uh, number six. Maybe a couple of pictures of the results. We replaced all the batteries in our older generators. Uh, we, you know, we schedule replacement for every three years on those. On those. Uh, Carl and Paul replaced the VFDs at station number five and 23. Ted Berry was on site this month to complete our schedule wet well cleaning. We had an odor complaint at 193 Pine Point Road on December 3rd. Uh, Josh Rory checked out the situation, de did detect an odor. He checked the uh, Pump station one and found uh, nothing unusual. On Monday, we add caustic to the wet well uh, to chemically pick the line and we'll continue to monitor the situation. We're, um, we've also added uh, potassium permanganate uh, pucks into the gravity line. Uh, we were out there today and didn't detect any odors. Uh, this past month, I received DEP's uh, review comments for the proposed sewer use regulations. Uh, we're in the process of reviewing those comments and of making the appropriate changes. A final draft will be available for the board to review at the next uh, trustees meeting. And we received one bid for the pipe material needed for the Route 114 Force Main project. The prices came in at approximately $29 a foot, which is significantly less than the engineer's estimate of uh, $70 a foot. So the total value of the bid was approximately $120. So we executed that purchase order since it fell well over than our anticipated costs. We had a couple other items that um, we did get bids in for uh, sludge disposal. Our contract actually runs through uh, 2022. Uh, so uh, bids will be going, uh, con uh, sludge disposal as anticipated will be going up. I think uh, we spend approximately $90 a uh, ton. It's, uh, the bid price came in at 114 um, the other, one other thing I wanted to bring up was um, with all the PLC upgrades that we have done lately, um, Carl became aware that we have uh, a lot of uh, stock, uh, Allen Bradley stock that uh, uh, is uh, good for the old equipment that we no longer had. So we reached out to this company called Radwell, put together a uh, inventory of it and got a, 
uh, and they are interested in buying it. They returned a quote to us of um, almost $27,000 for the equipment that we have. So we'll be boxing it up and shipping it out um, shortly. And that is all I have. Yes. Any questions for the superintendent? Go ahead, Ben. I was just curious what the construction activity was uh, that is affecting pump station 26. The, what happens is um, as they're erecting buildings, they've got the floor drains on the buildings. And until they get the roof on, we get some rainwater during a rain event uh -huh. that comes in. Uh, it collects on the, 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 the concrete. Okay. It just flows to the pump station. Right now, it's, uh, it's a situation that actually uh, probably helps things with some additional flows. I um, haven't been too concerned about it. Actually, I think having the additional flow for the small activity that we have down there actually is good overall for the system. Okay, thanks. Um, any other questions from the superintendent? Um, just curious about Radwell, mm -hmm. I think it was. Yeah. Um, do they purchase other things besides old VLC parts? I think that's their, their um, focus is uh, that, that's what they know. That's my understanding. They, Charles actually bought parts off of them when they have become unavailable on the, uh, through Alan Bradley, which is why they upgraded our PLCs. So. And the other question I had was the engineer's estimate of seventy dollars a foot mm -hmm. plastic pipe was that just purchased or installed? That was purchased. Okay. That yeah. was purchased, not installed. Cool. All right. Correspondence. Uh, we had one correspondence. It was with regards to our Chapter Five Hundred and Thirty certification, uh, which is, is is an annual requirement of DEP, and it's. Um, uh, as a result of our reduced toxicity testing, so we uh, submitted it, as did you. Good. Good. All right. Um, old business. Okay, an updated copy of the draft employee handbook was previously sent to you for review. The draft handbook was presented to the board last month. Actually, it was included in the, in the packet. Um, the draft was uh, presented to you last month during which the board had identified some areas requiring clarification. Betsy Olson from HR Main Consulting addressed all the trustees' comments within this update. I recommend the board adopt the updated draft employee handbook as presented to replace the current personnel rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. So moved. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Paul. Any other questions on the employee handbook as presented? Just superintendent. Uh, the absent trustees, have they had a chance to weigh into you at all? They have not commented on, on, any, on this at all. Um, so no, they haven't. Any other questions? By none, all in favor. None opposed. Thank you. New business. Uh, adoption of the 2022 budget. The proposed budget summary for 2022 is included in your packet. Last month, we held a budget workshop where the trustees and I went through the details of the budget, including each line item that makes up the budget. Changes since our workshop included um, Vehicle fuel, non-vehicle fuel, and manhole frames and covers on Black Point Road. Uh, vehicle fuel was increased to 20,000, up 12,000. Um, non-vehicle fuel was increased um, 10,000 from 20 to 30,000. And manhole frames and covers uh, were increased from 50,000 to 114. Uh, the fuel increases was as a result of conversations that Mr. Rico brought up during the workshop. Um, and uh, we took a look, um, Josh took the, the time to look into that, and these are our estimates using our current uh, fuel costs 
what will uh, come in next year. And on the Black Point Road frames and covers, uh, the state DOT has actually uh, doubled the length of road that they're uh, looking at doing. And so consequently, we have to address those frames and covers in, in that bigger project. Um, the proposed uh, budget uh, summary is uh, a 3.3 percent increase before capital expenditures. With capital expenditures, it's a 5.81 percent increase. Our fixed act capital expenditures went down 27 or 29 percent, rather 28 percent, and uh, so the total budget comes in at five. Million one hundred and fifty five thousand one hundred and twenty six dollars was which overall is a decrease of six percent. I, re I recommend approval of the proposed budget. Motion to approve the budget. Thank you, Ben. Ruth. Thank you, Ruth. Second. Okay. Questions, comments? So just a couple questions. Sure. So uh, it looks like uh, the operating budget for capital expenditures decreased from last month's workshop to now a half, about a half a percent. But overall, we're decreasing it almost nearly one and a half percent. Is that right? accurate? Let's, um, say that again. <clears throat> Looking at the numbers, it looks like the budget from the workshop to now has overall decreased to one and a half percent. Is that accurate? What's the, I'm not. See the blue. Okay. Versus the white. Back to that. Which line on, on the bottom line there, Joe, or is? Yeah, I'm going to have total budget. 6% versus 7%. Seven, seven yeah, oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So the decrease, overall decrease is slightly less. Right. That's correct. 5.155 versus 5.073. And those are attributed to the three items. Three items. The, the three items are the three items that were changed. That's it. Everything else is the same. Cool. Any more questions for the superintendent on the proposed budget? Barring none, all in favor? None opposed. Yay. Net energy billing products. On September 25th, 2020, the Scarborough uh, Sanitary District into, entered into a net billing energy credits agreement with Green Mile Solar. Uh, the EDF, the developer, has requested the attached amendment to this agreement due to increases in cost. Even with this increase, uh, competitive energy, our broker, uh, strongly recommends executing this agreement, uh, stating that the current net energy billing environment makes this a uh, lucrative project for the district. Uh, I have forwarded uh, this amendment to Bernstein and Shore, and I recommend authorizing the superintendent to execute this agreement upon a satisfactory review by Bernstein and Shore. And just in summary, um, I, I've, I tend to be looking at the old, uh, when this was approved, we're looking at somewhere between a fifty to $80,000 uh, electrical savings in costs. Given that information, I'll entertain a motion to approve the new rates of the revised net energy billing credits agreement. Thank you, Drew. Second. Thank you, Joe. Questions, comments for the superintendent? Go ahead, Paul. Just yeah, one question. I mean, maybe it might be helpful just to expand. I, there's been a lot of on this topic in the news, and it might be helpful maybe to just, uh, Dave, I don't know if you know this off the top of your head, if you might be able to kind of frame out what this 
agreement is and how the current regulatory environment impacts it or or doesn't. All right. Um, very good question, and I'll do the best I can. It's a very complicated subject, it yeah. um, and I know you're well versed in it, and I know you're well versed in it. So please feel free to to add, add a, to the confusion. Add to the confusion. <laughs> this project is actually grandfathered under the old rules and regulations. The new rules and regulations make this type of project a lot less lucrative for the district uh, for a number of reasons, uh, prim primarily because um, CMP successively lobbied uh, the legislature to, um, uh, to reduce the, the, the buyback, I guess, of the electricity at, uh, because they have, they have to, their transmission costs are the same no matter which way the power is going. And so they have to be able to support that. And so, but this, this project predated that. So consequently, our net energy billing credit that we get is actually at an elevated rate. Um, did I, how'd I do? That's about, that's about as far as I can go. <laughs> that, that was, yeah, that was, thank you. To add the, to the confusion, um, this net energy billing credit agreement not only benefits the district with the billing credits. So as Dave aptly explained, probably in the best analogy I've ever heard, it's like going to Hannaford to buy an L.O. Bean gift card for $80 and being able to go to L.O. Bean and spend that gift card on $100 worth of stuff. That's one part of the savings. The other part of the savings, which goes away be after January 1 because of the lack of grandfathering, is the renewable energy credits. Those things will also save the district money. So um, the original agreement, every megawatt hour worth of billing credit would cost the district $87.15. This new agreement brings it up to $98.60. So the original estimated savings of $50,000 to $80,000 is probably closer to what? Forty. It, it's actually very hard to predict because the value of the net energy billing credits has gone way up. Yes. Yeah, so if this project were built tomorrow, we would get a lot more than $80,000 yes. worth of billing credits next year yep. in 2022. Exactly. Yes. So it's not as, as simple as that. It isn't, no. That fifty to 80000 estimated savings is annual savings over the life of 20 years of the project. That's what that is. So. Shall I confuse you anymore, or are you done listening <laughs> to me? He's good. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Go ahead, Ben. So there's a, there's a period leading up to the project where they're allowed to change the terms of the contract prior to it being built? They, yes and no. Um, they, the, the issue is the, the, with the increase of cost of construction, um, they're actually at, they can terminate the contract. They can't change the terms of the contracts unless we amend it. Okay. Um, if they can't get additional funding through these agreements, uh, the project will die on the vine. Right. They won't. They just won't build it. And the reason they've asked for this is they originally went to CMP and said, how much will it cost to connect these projects to the grid? And CMP gave them a number of X number of dollars. Then CMP went back and said, wait a minute. We can't do that for X number of dollars. You need to give us Y number of dollars costing more to connect the project up to the grid. Yeah, that and that's right. where most of these costs come from. OK. Do, do we have the right, if the landscape changes in our favor, to do the same thing? No. no. But we have the right at any time to terminate the agreement. That's one of the we, things we they, could, uh, That's what I mean. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, this agreement actually in, increased our ability, yeah, our positioning with regards to termination. Embedded, okay. embedded that piece. Okay, thank you. 
really there is no downside and the district will only save money. It just won't save us much mm -hmm. with this new revised or, agreement. Or more. Hmm? Or more, depending on the bidding environment for the that billing could credits. Be. That could be. So. Any other questions? <coughs> okay. Barring none, all in favor? None opposed. Thank you. Lot 35 Innovation District. On behalf of HFR Holdings, uh, St. Clair Associates uh, requested district approval for an office slash warehouse building, uh, which is made up of 9,450 square feet of office space and 4,680 square feet of warehouse space, as presented in their submittal document. Based on district standards of four gallons per hundred square feet, uh, the anticipated daily flow is 378 gallons per day. I recommend approval uh, with the following conditions. Uh, the flow limited to uh, 378 gallons per day. Any flows in excess of the allotment or characterization are subject to additional approvals. And this lot uh, had a flow allocation of 160 gallons per day. The requested 218 gallon per day differential is subject to capacity reserves fees. The current capacity reserve fees is 18.38 per gallon, November uh, based on November 21, and adjusted monthly based on the ENR. Uh, based on this current rate, the total capacity reserve fee is $4,006.84. Any flows in excess of the approved allocation are subject to additional approvals from capacity reserve fees. Just to let you know, uh, St. Clair Associates actually has sent me an updated letter um, and a set of plans that reflect the, the flow regime, the four gallons per hundred uh, square feet. And a, uh, they added some additional details to their drawings that I re requested. So uh, with that, I recommend approval. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Thank you, Ben. Second. Second. Uh, on the rules. <laughs> All right. St. Clair Associates are here. Do they need to explain what the project is? Or did you it's a pretty that? straightforward project. It's, you know, a single building divided two thirds, one third office warehouse. Okay. Um, Dying into the sewer on Innovation Way, which was built as part of Phase Two, I believe. Okay. So, any questions for the superintendent or St. Clair Associates? All right, none. All in favor? None opposed. Thank you. <coughs> Budget summary. Uh, 11 month budget summary is included in your packet. I recommend approval. Second. <laughs> Favor? None opposed. Excellent. All right. Public comments? All right. Trustee comments. We'll start with Ruth. You know what? When I sat in this seat, I thought, darn it, he's going to call me first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all again for your hard work um, in keeping everything flowing. No pun intended. Have a uh, Wonderful Christmas and a great <clears throat> holiday, and get your shovels ready for Saturday. So, thank you. Uh, thank you. Paul. Uh, uh, definitely a uh, big thanks to the staff um, and to Dave. A uh, ton of work done this year. I just, you know, looking at this month and seeing everything that was accomplished and just thinking about this past year, uh, it was uh, an awful lot got done. That's a, a big kudos. Uh, so, thanks again, and um, crew, everybody. Crew really deserves a lot of credit for that. Ben. Yeah, it seems like it's, it's been a great year. 
getting, getting a lot done at the district, and, and there's been some hard times, and everything's run, run smooth, and everybody's done an excellent job, so kudos to the staff, and uh, happy holidays, everybody. Cool. Joe? I echo the same comments. Uh, another great year at the district. Thank you to the staff, and Merry Christmas, and be safe. All right, I'll echo our fellow trustee comments. I'll go those and thank you to Carl and Paul on the VFDs, Josh on the order complaints, on the pipe goods. Uh, I appreciate your hard work, all of you. The ladies are doing a great job on keeping everyone in line at the district, and I appreciate that too. Um, I wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. With that, I'll entertain the final motion to adjourn to executive session according to MRS Title I, Chapter 4306.A. You got that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to be that. <laughs> so moved. Thank you, Ben. Second. Thank you, Joe. All in favor? None opposed? Excellent. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.